All right. So the themes in early modern art, okay, and that, that means of well, that's modern art from the early period of modern art, not early modern like you know Europe before from the French Revolution. Um, so what are we seeing? Well, it's a time of great uncertainty and insecurity, right? Um, there's all this new technology. Uh, we have mass media now. Um, things are changing. Mainly, though, we had the you know the destruction of World War One, and we had for the first time now people in big numbers are thinking, well, maybe our governments don't know what's best for us, or maybe mankind isn't always going to um, be progressing maybe things aren't always going to be getting better because by and large up until world war one especially in western europe things had just been improving right and at an improvingly rapid pace so people now are uncertain about the future and they're insecure about their place in it so we're going to see that in art and then a stronger version of that is called disillusionment and hopefully you guys don't feel this way but it's normal sometimes when you're young to feel disillusioned uh, and that's when you're kind of thinking, hey, wait a minute, um, people have been lying to me. Uh, things aren't the way they said they were. Um, I can't trust people. Uh, that's disillusionment, okay? And uh, that can be difficult as well. But again, because of the death and horror of the First World War, some people are thinking, you know what? I don't, I don't trust the government. I don't believe what they're saying. I don't believe organized religion. Um, I don't believe any of it. They reject it. Now, one thing you learned about was Freud, and we talked about is the subconscious mind, the power of the id. Okay, people are really ready to hear about this in the wake of the First World War, um, that mankind is not perhaps the most rational creature and is governed by things that are in his unconscious mind. So artists are going to be exploring that. Overt sexuality. Uh, you saw a lot of discussion of sex in the Freud video. Okay, people are starting to openly talk about sex and its impact on people and the human psyche and its power in society. And so art is going to be begin to deal with sexual themes more overtly. And then key uh, is, you know, recovering from the shock of the First World War. Uh, a lot of people are going to um, be portraying or responding to the incredible violence of the First World War and, you know, 10 million soldiers killed um, and just industrial scale death and destruction. So violence and savagery, you know, that man, again, isn't perhaps a decent creature, right? That's going to be key. And then we're going to get these three different themes. The first one is the, the first to come about. It starts actually a little before the First World War, but it belongs as, as a modern art movement. Um, and it's called cubism yeah. and it's pretty easy to understand why they call it cubism essentially it's taking images that we normally see every day and breaking them apart into their most basic shapes okay. um, so here this is uh, George Brock woman with a guitar and it's a, it's a woman sitting playing a guitar and in his mind he deconstructed that whole image disassembled it and put the pieces back together in a different form, okay, in a more abstract form. And so you can see here's part of the guitar, right? Okay, and here, here are the fingers on the fretboard, but they're down here instead of up here. Um, there is uh, some printing here. We can see four or five different angles of the woman's face at the same time, okay? They're trying to break with how you see things normally in your waking life and look at things in different ways, okay? Um, Paul Cezanne, uh, another famous cubist, said basically that the artist should look at things as the cylinder, the sphere, and the cone, okay? Basically, break images down. What are their simple things? What, what are you, if you look at a man riding a horse and you break that down into the most simple shapes, what are you really looking at, okay? So that's what the cubist is trying to um, capture, okay? And here, the most famous of the Cubists, and he's going, he transcends several art periods. Um, that's the Spaniard Pablo Picasso. Okay, and here is his version of Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, or the Women of Avignon, which had been a, a famous painting earlier on, um, a famous 
uh, series of nudes from the classical period, right? And here he here's his take on it. Now keep in mind, Picasso can paint beautifully. He can paint um, things in any form he wants, but he's trying to break the images down into something different, okay? And so this is the cubist version of the women of Avignon, right? And you can see their, their bodies are, are broken into these dominant shapes, um, very much different angles and curves. Um, and then two of the women have non-human faces transposed onto them. Okay, so we're seeing people representing images and things uh, in a way that you don't see with the naked eye. Okay, they're inserting themselves as the artist into um, what they are painting. The, the briefest, but I think maybe most fun of these is the Dadaist movement. Okay, and Dada, not Dada, you know, like babies say, but Dada, and especially in German, means nothing. It has no meaning at all. Okay, and these people are very much disillusioned by their experience of the war. and post-war society, and they are beginning to say that nothing has any meaning. And so basically, nothing is sacred, nothing deserves your respect, nothing you know, is what it seems, and everything is meaningless. Um, and so they're going to mock the rules, the people in charge, okay, the power structures, they're just gonna um, make fun of stuff and make it look ridiculous. Okay? And in fact, one of the things that they think doesn't have any meaning and should be mocked is art. So in kind of a weird twist, they're going to make art that's trying to destroy art. Okay, so they're saying nothing has meaning, including art. And so they want their works to hang in a museum next to great classics. And they want their works to, to make you realize that none of it has any meaning. Okay. Um, and essentially, they're responding to, as I said, um, the destruction of World War One, and then the, the societal collapse, particularly in Germany, which we'll get to next week, um, of traditional values, and traditional morals. Um, and I say none of, it, none of it means anything. And it's, this is also called nihilism. Okay? If you're a nihilist, you don't believe in anything. Right? And you, it's, it's, it's like an even more extreme version of... Um, existentialism that we've talked about in the past right where there's 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 not a greater good there's not a greater story there's not a higher power um ultimately things will just cease to exist and become nothingness and so that's the nihilist which is shown in dadaism and this painting by george gross um it's a it's almost a little too recognizable and organized to be dadaism um, but it's definitely dealing with all the Dadaist themes. Um, here you have the um, the war veteran, right? He's lost his arm, but you can he looks like uh, he's you know hasn't eaten well. He's unemployed. Society's not taking care of him. Contrast that with the the fat bourgeoisie middle class businessman with his briefcase and his starched collar. Okay, um, and then over here we have the secret agent of the government spying on them. Um, here's the, the nameless, faceless proletarian, the factory worker, and here's the factory in the back. Um, this is almost too recognizable to be Dada, but Gross was a Dadaist. This next example is more spot on Dada, and this is by Raoul Hausman. And it's called ABCD, 1924-25 is when he made it, right, in the heart of the 1920s, all right? And uh, here is... A, cl a newspaper clipping with his name on it, okay? Um, we have this face, as, you know, in some kind of pain or anger, um, and it's just a collage, all right? Here we have um, a, a gestating or a woman, okay, a cross-section, uh, and all these different type faces. It's, and it's essentially, what is it? Okay, he would argue it's nothing. Okay, so, you know, if you... Remember, I'm sure during sometime in public school, uh, you had to make a collage about yourself or about you know a certain topic or a scientific process. Well, you probably wouldn't get a very good grade on this one because it's not about anything. But that's the point of Dadaism. Right? So we have Cubism, Dadaism, and then the one that is 
really closely related to what you've just been looking at, and that's surrealism. Right? Surrealism is beyond real. That's what sur means, surrealism. Okay? And it's the longest, Dada is the shortest. Surrealism uh, and Cubism last much longer. Surrealism goes all the way into the um, early World War II period. Right? And many of the artists who created the Surrealist movement initially had been in the Dadaist movement um, and went beyond it. And essentially, the Surrealist is, like many people, including Freud, concerned with what's going on in our subconscious mind. What is motivating us? What's happening in the part of ourselves that we don't show to people in polite society? Okay, what's happening in the id, right? You learned about the id. Um, and so they're, they're trying to paint things from our unconscious mind. Okay. And so it's essentially going to look like uh, things from dreams, right? Or nightmares. All right, so here is the elephant celebs, and it's a large mechanical looking thing that also looks like the back end of an elephant. And is this a tail? Is this a trunk? You know, is this the neck? And this is the head. So the head is a distorted cow's head. All right, and here we have a, a dismembered leg, and here we have a human torso with the head removed, all sorts of really strange looking stuff that you would not see coming down the street during your normal daily life. Thank goodness, right? Right. So surrealism is the dream world, the unconscious mind. Right. The most famous of the surrealists is Salvador Dali. And you may have seen this a very famous painting, which a lot of people have called just, you know, melting clocks, but it's called The Persistence of Memory from 1931. And remember Einstein, we talked super briefly about it, but, but in Einstein's theory of relativity, even time isn't constant. So nothing is constant. Nothing is permanent. Everything is changing. And so here we have these dripping clocks. We have this and, you know, what is it? Is it an animal? Is it part of a plant? Is it a human organ? You know, it's, it's almost inscrutable what it is. And then we have this, this odd uh, landscape back here, okay, with the cliffs going into the sea. Um, so very surrealistic, very dreamlike, okay? So you have Cubism, Dadaism, and Surrealism. And your job is going to be to tell the difference. All right? You're going to have, well, there's 11 samples. Um, let me go over the assignment here real quick. And we'll do the first one together. So you have in the, in the PDF file, you have all those notes I just did. Um, and then there are 11 individual paintings, right? So on, on this Google Doc, you're going to write super briefly about each painting, right? So let's, let's do the first one together. And this will be number one on your sheet. So see, they each have a big yellow number right there to make sure you number it so we know which one we're talking about, all right? So when we look at this painting, and let me open up the chat, all right? What are we looking at here? Someone say in the chat, is it Dadaism, Cubism, or Surrealism? Good. Yeah. Well, I, I agree with Conrad and Iris um, and Isabel. Daniel, don't worry about it. In a sense, I mean, you're not wrong in, the, in, the, in that it's hard to get any meaning out of it, but this is cubism, all right? And so all you would do for this one is you would write a sentence, uh, I believe this is cubist, or I believe this is cubism, period. There's one sentence. And then one sentence of why you believe that. So you would say, I believe this is cubism, period. Uh, I think it's cubist because it is composed of very simple blocky shapes. Or I believe it's cubism because it takes an image and breaks it down into its basic components. All right. So that's all you have to do. Two sentences for each one. All right. And if you get it right, don't worry about getting it wrong. If you get it wrong, as long as you say what it is and why you think it's that, you'll still get full credit. But if everyone you get right, you'll get 
extra credit. So this is a, a good chance to earn some extra credit. Okay, so there's three points possible for each one, and one of those points is extra credit. And this one you already nailed, right? So you got a sentence saying what it is, a sentence saying why you think that, and then you got it right. You got cubism, all right? So that's three points right there. Right, and the rest of them, they're all numbered. So on your own, you're going to look at number two, which I talked about this one in the notes last week. If you were paying attention, you already know the answer to that one too. So there's another three points. Number three, all the way up through number 11, all right? Cubism, Dadaism, Surrealism, and why, okay? And that goes in that Google Doc. Um, this shouldn't be that hard. I hope you have fun with it. Um, you're learning more about art than a lot of people these days know. Uh, and it shouldn't take a long time. And so all you have for this week, you have the invention write-up from the weekend. You have guided reading 15, uh, section one, and you have this. So should, should no reason to be behind in this unit at all by the weekend. All right, and then Monday during our short session, um, I'll go over these and uh, we can discuss them briefly and I'll give you the answers and who painted it and et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that's, that's what you're working on. And then next week we're gonna get into the political stuff, the rise of dictators um, and the dark consequences of the 20s, okay? So I'll be here if you have questions about it. Otherwise, just don't be afraid, charge ahead and identify that art.